Hi, my name is Bern Fazliu. I am the Lazy Historian. I'm here in the Museum in Arlovic uh, Preševo, which is in Serbia, but it's mostly an Albanian community right on the border of Kosovo. And like I said, I'm in a museum. And I've come check out some of the stuff they have to offer. Like, like this. Like over here you can see different types of guns. Like you can see a like you can see an old Colt revolver right there. They, they, this could most people would normally think this could probably be the fifties, but it likely wasn't, because uh, look at the rust; it looks older than that. Am I allowed to touch it? Am yeah. I allowed to? Okay. Let's just. I guess we can start with this one again. Sorry, it's. I just get excited about these. Anyway, this this was used probably in the First World War, or well, Balkan Wars even. If, I, if I'm if I'm estimating correctly, I'm not exactly sure how old exactly this is, but. I reckon this is at least from the mid mid 1800s, uh, maybe late 1800s. Again, not gun expert. We got an expert, but revolvers were very good. These these rarely jammed up, even if, if so. These are probably great for hand for close quarters combat. The mm -hmm. Put them in there. Gonna be saying that a lot today. This is that. This is also a. I believe this is also a Colt gun right here. Revolver like before. This was probably used. Uh, this seems newer. I don't know if this was probably, I don't know if this was just clean properly or if it was really old, but it, it could have probably just been used by some random, random person in, the Yugosla in Yugoslavia, or it could have just been used, it could have actually even been used in World War II by partisans even. Who knows? I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Okay, this is an English bayonet. I, uh, if that's what he's telling me. It looks very old. I can't exactly... See how I can't see any markings on it because of the rust and dirt. So it's safe to say that it's at least a hundred years old. <laughs> My yet I don't know how this came to be. I can't. This doesn't look like it would have probably been before the 1900s. Even this looks classic old muskety type of what you would see in those like Revolutionary War movies. Even like when the guns fired one shot, one shot, and you have to take like ten minutes to reload. Okay, this is something that's, you know, not a weapon, if you can't tell. <laughs> this looks like, uh, this was made from, uh, this looks like it was 1463, 1463, yeah. Made those, like, five, six hundred years ago. <laughs> About 40 more years from being 600 years old. This was probably used for, like, uh, I don't know, maybe like cream or milk, probably for like coffee back then. The Ottomans were the ones to bring coffee into Europe after the sea failed sieges of Vienna. How good condition that is. And this, I'm with the march of Mm-hmm. Now this looks like a more modern bayonet. Probably used from the First World War. I'm with the heck. Okay, well that was... Uh, this is uh, this is very this is, seems well, this seems pretty good quality good considering. I'm trying to see if there's any markings to label out this which who belonged to. Nothing. Uh, let's see something here, but it looks. Uh, I see. It, look, it looks like a B and then a, a T and a three and a triangle. If you can see it right there. Mm -hmm. huh, but it's I can't. Maybe it could have been British. Could have been French. It, I know, I know the, I know the French really supported the Serbs, so it's likely possible. Maybe even Russians, or maybe this could have just been grabbed. This could have just been randomly grabbed on the battlefield and taken as a trophy of some sort. Oh. Looks like I put it in the wrong way. A little embarrassing. Yeah, okay. 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 Various caliber from rifles, shotguns. That just looks like a kitchen knife. And this. Okay, this gun. Wow, this is uh, this is this looks like one of those old school pirate guns you'd see. I mean, look, even has like a classic, you know, skull with the crossbones. Although the skull has horns. Looks like this only fired two shots. Obviously, I'm trying to figure out the manufacturer of this, but there's no clear visible markings. At least in my opinion, I'm not exactly a professional on this. But yeah, this is uh, this is pretty cool. I'd say probably made in like. Hmm, 17, 1800, just, just a rough guess, probably even before that, even like I said before, I'm not an expert, but I am very impressed.
something really cool. It would belong to his grandfather. Or, yeah, it belonged to his grandfather, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry, again, this just wasn't very well scripted. <laughs> but it is what was used in the First Balkan War in the Battle of Kumanovo between the, Serbi between the Serbians and Ottoman Empire. Like this is this. Okay, this sword is bad. This is very lightweight. And this he has two. This was used by his grandfather in the first Balkan War, like I just said, about Kumanovo. It was Serbian victory. About forty five hundred casualties on both sides, but the Serbs lost a lot of materiel and a lot after the battle a lot of Ottoman soldiers just simply deserted. But like what well, it's like very it's like very mind boggling when you Hold something like, like you read you read about these things on Wikipedia or whatever. You talk to people who know something about the battle, but when you hold something that was like actually used to it, it, it's crazy. Like this this was used to kill a guy. Probably like for whatever reason, for money, for land, for opportunism, or for whatever. Like this uh, uh, Well this is this is very new and pretty sure. Belong to my Great grandfather, yes. I, I don't know his name. The Kuchikian Idris. Idris. Yeah. It is belonged to Idris Fazlu, right? Okay, Fazlu. Sorry. It's just, oh, wow, this, okay, well, okay, sorry. I'm getting. I'm just getting a line of information from the rock. Uh, the, my cousin Granit, the cameraman. <laughs> anyway, so this was like I said, this was used by my great grandfather Idris, and this is Turkish made, obviously. So, but then again, who knows if there's. Like I said, there's a lot of capture more material on both sides. I do know that a lot of Albanians fought in pretty much every army since ever. I mean, <laughs> they fought for pretty much every country but their own, except until recently. <laughs> but yeah, this was probably used in the Balkan Wars. I mean, the, he pro Idris probably did this for whatever reason. It's probably because he got tired of the Ottomans. Maybe he, just, maybe he was with the Ottomans and fought against the Serbs because he hated the Serbs. Mm. I mean, I mean, it's it's crazy. I mean, this is literally... My, this is literally part of my family history, right in my hands. Wow, it's very lightweight, honestly. I mean, I mean, it's a little wobbly right here, but then again, that's pretty much 100 years old, maybe even more. Yeah. Like, wow, it's, I, th I think it's in pretty good condition in all things, considering. Okay, and let's just uh, check out some of the stuff right here. Unfortunately, we can't open it all of these like this, like we could before, but I still hope you can get like amazing views. I mean, you have a, that sword right there. Is that uh, is that uh, we opened them one time? Unfortunately, we do have some pictures. Unfortunately, but all these on Germany. Yeah. Okay. So these were all bought from Germany. I mean, probably from various different craftsmen. I mean, I mean that that one we opened it. It had like Asian markings, so it could be Japanese, it could be Chinese, and they had steak in both. The the Germans had steaks in both. Okay. We guess we're gonna open it now. Be careful, don't wanna. Here you can see the markings. I mean, in the handle right here, there would usually be like, a, like a, a, the craftsman's art the signature, so people would know it's in. But unfortunately, we don't have the tools to like break this apart safely and put it back together. So can't really do that. I'm afraid, sorry, <laughs> another time maybe. So this probably was like given to somebody as a gift, maybe because. And just, you know, the, you don't just find random Japanese or Chinese sword makers there. There, so this I know Germany had stakes in world before World War One in China and in Asia in general, and after World War One they came close with Japan, particularly Nazi Germany, maybe as a gift by someone visiting or maybe a diplomat. Who knows what? Okay, now let's just check out some. We have other we have other guns right here from different different timelines. These definitely. These definitely look like to be around like early 1800s, possibly like 1700s, around Amer American Revolutionary times, before 1812. These just have some like old like trinkets, like you have like the ricotta, this is what they would use for like coffee, tea. And I mean, some of this stuff looks like this, some of the stuff looks like it was made like a couple of days ago, maybe a couple of years. But and honestly, this stuff is like decades, some of the stuff is even hundreds of years old. And it's so low, and it like just looks in fantastic condition. Now over here we have like some old style pipes. And so, yeah, these are like smoking cigarettes, as my cameraman loves to say. There's also 
It's also a bunch of like little like other tools. Like a lot of this love right here is just like old, old and new lighters. Or you have some like old shaving equipment right here. Okay. You. Okay. Thank you for watching my video and I do have my own Instagram account at the lazy historian. Please follow, subscribe and share with other people. Thank you.